I recently embarked on a project to upgrade my 1995 Mustang, and after doing considerable research, I decided that uh, going the Moats quarter horse route was the way to go. So I just recently had that in. Uh, basically, here's an open box as to what's in it. First is a uh, micro USB to regular USB cable. A micro USB to medium USB. This is the one that'll mount in the car that will allow me to connect the quarter horse to the computer with the second cable, which is this cable. Obviously, this one is a whole lot sturdier cable than using a uh, micro USB connection. And this actually plugs into the processor. And here's the actual quarter horse itself. Obviously this plugs into the top of the computer in the car. And right here is where the USB cable plugs in. The battery for the quarter horse. The quarter horse itself, of course, is battery backed up memory, so when the battery dies, you lose your program. So you've got to burn a uh, chip to hold your program. This is their Jaybird burner, obviously with that same micro USB interface. And here is the Moats chip, which would actually hold the program when it is uh, burned permanent and take the place of the quarter horse inside the unit to actually run the vehicle. In my case, I was uh, going to increase the engine size and cubic inches in the car, so it made it mandatory to find some means of tuning the computer. And obviously, I had to have it burned to an EEPROM chip. There are several outfits that just sell just these chips and you can have them programmed by providing them a lot of information. But I decided I'd rather be able to do my own. Uh, it just takes a lot of time to do a turnaround if you make, make another change in the car and have to send the chip off to have them reprogram it. And obviously you can't drive the vehicle until you get the chip back. Everything we're looking at here basically is for 1986 through 2004 vehicles or electronic engine control four and five vehicles. The six vehicles are not covered which are 2005 and afterwards. According to Moats, this is everything I need to program my Ford once I get uh, the engine complete. Not cheap, right at $500 with the software that you haven't shown you yet, which we'll see a little later on in the video. But uh, the quarter horse is about 250. Each of the others is about 60 or $75 each. Obviously, uh, if you're living in the deserts of Nevada or California, or it's extremely cold and dry air, I shouldn't be handling these things the way I am now. Again, I'm in the south and it's nice and warm and humid down here, so there's very little danger of electrical discharge. So if you're actually installing these in a cold or very dry environment, you definitely want to have some protection against static discharge. And don't even think about taking them out of the bag while there might be a static discharge problem. You're probably going to 
run a high risk of destroying these before you'd ever have a chance to use them. Just notice this in the box and that uh, this also comes with a bracket for mounting it and even the mounting screws so it'll make it much easier to mount this in the car. So far I'm very very impressed with uh, Mr. Motes and his products and I'm looking forward to see how this is going to work in the real world. But we'll take a look at that later on in the video. If you're thinking about modifying your 1986 through 2000 Ford and using a quarter horse, there are six videos on YouTube that are recorded class by the Motes tuning and technical expert that are well worth watching. Uh, it's three days, so you're basically looking at the neighborhood of at least 18 hours of instruction, but it's well worth going through it to see what you're going to need. It'll save you an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money as you go through picking parts to upgrade your Ford Mustang or other Ford vehicle that you might uh, use this Moats card on. Well, every time I ignore Mr. Murphy, he proceeds to get me, so I'm going to play it safe here on this one and just disconnect the battery as well. I know they say you probably could just leave the ignition turned off and be okay, but since I'm going to be leaving the door open, I don't want to drain the battery down, so I'll just be doubly safe here. Now I know there's absolutely nothing possible that can go wrong as far as shorting something out. Okay, time to get started inside the car. First thing is to go ahead and remove the uh, trim panel. Make sure you pull straight up so you don't break any tabs. Should come right off. The next step is to remove the plastic rivet. Here I'm just using a breaker bar to pry it out gently. And it should come right out. Next step is the kick panel, and it should come out very easily, just like this one does. Now I've got three electrical connectors to deal with. Trust me, this was the hardest part of the job. The first one was pretty easy. The second one was very difficult. The third one was almost impossible. The only way I got them off of there was to pry it with a screwdriver using the top bracket against the bottom clip. After considerably prying connectors in this manner for quite a while, they eventually came off. And I've edited out over 30 minutes of aggravation here. One special note you want to do is to check the inside of all your connectors on the lower side. In my case, as you'll see here, I had some trash that fell down in one. This could have been a real disaster if I put it back together with the trash in there, then the computer wouldn't have worked. Now I've got to take two small screws out. One is located here, and one is located down at the bottom underneath the carpet where you can't currently see it. There's one final screw to remove here. This one holds the computer securely against the inside of the kick panel.
Now I've got the one final bolt to deal with. This one holds the connector to the computer. It's 10 millimeter. I started out using a ratchet and a socket, then I switched over to using a box wrench. After wiggling a little bit, the computer connector comes right off. Now that all the mounting screws are out and the connector is disconnected, the computer should come out without too much trouble. Just a matter of getting everything out of the way so you can pull straight down. And that's it for part one. Part two will pick it up when we put the moach quarter horse in.